What is up guys and welcome back to another video and today we are going to go over 10 of the creepiest South Park episodes. Number 10, Best Friends Forever, is the 4th episode in Season 9 of South Park. The Terry Schiavo case was a 2005 massive media frenzy over one vegetative woman's rights to die. The episode is all about how death is a private matter that shouldn't be turned into a circus. In the episode, Kenny is the first person to get the new PSP game system, but soon after is run over by an ice cream truck and dies. After ascending to heaven, Kenny learns that God had created the PSP to search for the person who can command his legions against Satan's forces of hell in a manner of like that of a video game. Kenny agrees to take the challenge, but he is revived just after hearing this. Because he had been dead for so long, he cannot talk or communicate and has suffered permanent brain damage and is kept alive with a feeding tube. The reading of Kenny's will is interrupted by the announcement that Kenny is still alive. The lawyer mentions a passage about Kenny's wishes in the event of him being in a vegetative state, but the last page of the will is missing, making it impossible to tell what he wishes for. It turns into a battle between Cartman, who wants to pull the plug, and the other friends who want to keep him alive. After a long, intensive media campaign, the two sides are arguing in Kenny's hospital suite when Kenny's lawyers announces that the last page of his will has been found and that Kenny's wishes were that if he was ever in a vegetative state, please, for the love of God, don't ever show me in that condition on national television. Both sides realize they were wrong for turning this into a media circus and they pull the plug on Kenny. Kenny returns to heaven just in time to command the angels to victory using a golden PSP. What's extra creepy about the episode is that it aired mere hours before Terry Schiavo finally died. Number 9, Trapped in the Closet, which is episode 12 in season 9. This episode was a huge controversy at the time. This episode, more than any other cultural force, revealed Scientology as the creepy, money-sucking cult that it is. Everyone knows it now, but back in 2005, Scientology was not widely viewed as a cult, just a goofy new age self-help religion. In the episode, Stan joins Scientology in an attempt to find something fun and free. After the discovery of his surprisingly high Thetan levels, he is recognized as the reincarnation of L, Ron Hubbard, the founder of the church. They ask him not to only join the church, but to lead the church and continue Hubbard's writings. Stan does so and shows his writings to the Scientology president. He initially approves of the work, but when Stan says, to really be a church, you can't charge money to help, the president reveals to Stan that the church is in reality a global money-making scam. He asks that Stan continues with that in mind. Stan appears to agree and keeps writing. Outside the house, the president introduces Stan to his followers, to whom he will read parts of his new doctrine. However, instead of presenting it to them, Stan states that he is not a reincarnation of L. Ron Hubbard and the Scientology is just a big fat global scam. The Scientologists grow angry and threaten to sue him. Number 8, Cartman Gets an Anal Probe, was the pilot episode of South Park. In it, Cartman tells the boys about a dream he had the previous night about being abducted by aliens. The others try to convince him that the events did happen and that the aliens are visitors, but Cartman refuses to believe them. Chef pulls up in his car and asks the boys if they saw the alien spaceship the previous evening, inadvertently confirming Cartman's dream and relays stories of alien anal probes which throughout the episode Cartman denies he experienced. After Chef leaves, the school bus picks up the boys and looking out the back window they watch in horror as the visitors abduct Ike. Kyle spends the rest of the episode attempting to rescue him. At school, Cartman begins farting fire and Kyle unsuccessfully tries to convince his teacher to excuse him from class to find his brother. When Chef learns that Kyle's brother was abducted and sees the machine emerge from Cartman's anus, he helps the boys escape from school by pulling the fire alarm. Soon afterwards, a spaceship appears. Kyle throws a stone and a spaceship fires back, propelling Kenny into the road. As he gets up, he is trampled over by a herd of cows, but survives. A police car then runs Kenny over and kills him. Stan and Kyle meet Wendy at Stark's Pond, where she suggests using the machine lodged inside Cartman to contact the visitors. To lure them back, the children tie Cartman to a tree, and the next time he farts, a massive satellite dish emerges from his anus. The alien spaceship arrives, and Ike jumps to safety. Number 7, Scott Tetterman Must Die, which is episode 4 in season 5. 
In this episode, 9th grader Scott Tennerman makes Carmen believe that buying pubic hair from him will make Carmen reach puberty. Carmen believes him and pays him $10 for the pubic hair before realizing he was tricked. Angry at having been conned, Carmen desperately tries various methods to get his money back but was outsmarted each time by Scott. So, Carmen starts to plot revenge. Enraged, Carmen writes a letter to Scott's favorite band, Radiohead, to get them to visit during the chili cook-off, claiming that Scott is a victim of cancer in his ass. Carmen tells Stan and Kyle of his plan to get Scott's penis bitten off at the cook-off, which Radiohead would arrive at and see him crying, making them think lowly of Scott. He tells Scott's parents of a starving pony on an abandoned farm, which prompts his parents to go and save it that night. Then, in an attempt to publicly humiliate Cartman again, Scott cooks a chili consistent of the pubic hairs of all teenagers in South Park. The day of the cook-off, Scott eats some of Cartman's chili while Cartman lavishly scarfs down Scott's, much to the silent enjoyment of the onlookers who are in Scott's prank. As Cartman is finishing Scott's chili, Scott prepares to tell him the secret ingredient, but Cartman then indicates he, that he already knew and the chili is eating is not Scott's, as he switched it with chefs. Cartman then announces that his actual plan was to get the farmer who owns the pony to shoot and kill Scott's parents for trespassing, saying that they were violent pony killers in the area. Cartman then stole the corpses, chopped them up, and placed their body parts into the very chili Scott was eating. Scott then finds his mother's finger in the bowl and immediately vomits and starts crying. At the end, Radiohead shows up unaware what just happened and laughed at Scott for crying. Number 6, Ginger Kids, which is episode 11 in season 9. For a class presentation, Carmen delivers a hate speech against what he calls gingers. People with red hair, freckles, and pale skin due to a disease called gingivitis. He describes them as being disgusting, inhuman, unable to survive in sunlight, and having no souls. When Kyle points out that he has red hair too, Carmen says there is a second class of redheads, the daywalkers, who have red hair but no pale skin and freckles. In Kyle's attempt to prove Cartman wrong, he decides to do a presentation countering Cartman's facts, arguing that being a ginger kid is an inheritable trait. During Kyle's presentation, Carmen stands up for his claims and as a result, Carmen's speech causes a newfound prejudice towards ginger kids in school. The gingers are treated as outcasts and forced to eat in the hallway rather than the cafeteria. Stan, Kyle, and Kenny agree that they need to teach Cartman a lesson. At night, the three sneak into Cartman's room and use skin bleach to make his skin pale, dye his hair red, and put henna tattoos of freckles on his face. Carmen wakes up in the morning to discover that he has become a ginger himself. He starts facing discrimination from the very people he himself convinced to despise gingers. In response to this, Carmen establishes a ginger separate movement to promote the better aspects of being a ginger. Carmen's movement quickly becomes violent and eventually, Carmen convinces the ginger kids to decide to kill all the town's non-gingers by telling them the only way to fight hate is with more hate. The boys decide to sneak into Cartman's room and exchange him back to the original appearance. However, on their way over to his house, ginger kids start to creep out of seemingly nowhere and follow them. And the non-gingers are taken to the sunset room at the airport Hilton Hotel and are imprisoned in cages and will be chosen for sacrifice one by one. Daywalker Kyle is chosen as the first. However, he asks that before he dies, he says something private to Cartman. Kyle whispers to Cartman's ear that he is not in fact a ginger. Now thinking only of self-preservation, he realizes that his own cult were to learn of his true identity, he would too die. The episode ends when Cartman thinks that non-gingers should be released and everyone should live in peace. Number 5, Woodland Critter Christmas, which is episode 8 of season 14. In this episode, Stan discovers a group of talking animals in the forest. They ask him for help in building a manger because one of them is about to give birth to their savior. Another problem soon appears as one of the critters explains that every year the animal pregnant with their savior is killed by a mountain lion. Stan agrees to help and ends up killing the mountain lion, effectively making her three cubs orphans. Stan is then horrified to discover that the woodland critters are Satan worshippers and that their savior is actually an antichrist. They celebrate Stan's victory by sacrificing Rabbity, the rabbit, devouring his flesh and having an orgy with his blood. The only one who can kill the Antichrist is a mountain lion, so Stan goes back to ask the cubs for help. 
but they're too small to take on the critters. However, they can stop the birth by learning to perform abortions. Meanwhile, the evil critters are searching for an unbaptized human host for the Antichrist. They discover Kyle, who is Jewish, and kidnap him to serve their purpose. Stan returns to discover that the Antichrist has already been born and that Kyle is tied to a satanic altar. Then, Santa Claus arrives and pulls out a shotgun and slaughters all the critters. He explains that the Antichrist will die without a human host in habit, but Kyle suddenly allows the Antichrist to possess him, declaring that he will conquer the world in the name of the Jews. The scene suddenly cuts to the boys' 4th grade class, revealing that the entire episode up until now has been a story read by Cartman for an assignment to write a Christmas story. Back in the story, Kyle begins to react with horror at how evil the Antichrist feels and begs the others to get him out of there. Santa, however, says that they have no choice but to kill Kyle before the Antichrist can consume his soul and take full control of him. Thinking quickly, Stan has the Lion Cups perform an abortion on Kyle's anus, removing the Antichrist, which Santa unceremoniously smashes with a sledgehammer. Santa gives Stan a Christmas wish, which Stan uses to resurrect the mountain lion he killed. Everyone then goes home to a happy Christmas. Number 4, Britney's New Look, which was Season 12, Episode 2. The boys find out Britney Spears is in South Park and set out to find her. They pass the security where she is staying by, claiming to be her children. Brittany is ecstatic to find out that her children have come to see her, but once she realizes that they are actually not her children, she falls into a deeper depression. Finally overwhelmed by the constant harassments and jokes, she attempts suicide by shooting herself in the head with a shotgun. Most of the shot missed her head and she survives. Guilt ridden, Kyle and Stan visit her in the hospital to apologize, telling themselves that they should have left her alone. When one of the paparazzi breaks out through the windows, Spears' manager sneaks her and the boys out in the back into his car, but the paparazzi chases them. They escape to a recording studio where she is made to record a comeback song, although Stan and Kyle insist that this will only make matters worse. She later performs at the MTV Video Music Awards, where the crowd nitpicks her flaws, almost completely overlooking the fact that two thirds of her skull are gone and she can only speak in horrible gurgles. The boys decide they need to help Brittany and devise a plan to take her to the North Pole by train to escape from it all. Brittany gets on a train to the North Pole. The train stops at a village where the paparazzi villagers and the boys are waiting. The villagers explain to the boys that ritual human sacrifice is needed for good corn harvest. However, in modern more civilized times, people prefer to draw their sacrifices to suicide rather than stoning them to death. The crowd overwhelms Spears and proceeds to somehow photograph her death. Months later, South Park residents comment on the good corn harvest while at the supermarket. Number 3, The Wacky Molestation Adventure In this episode, Kyle asked his parents if he can go to a concert with his friends and was told he was not allowed. This angered him and he said he wished he had no parents at all. He shares his anger with his friends and Cartman suggests he call the police and tell them that his parents have been molesting him and they have to come take him away. The police come and haul his parents off to jail. The boys then go to the concert and Kyle later hosts a party at his parent-free home. Seen how liberated they are without parents, all the children begin calling the police on their parents and teachers resulting in the adults being taken to prison. Soon, nearly all the town's adults have been arrested, the rest having moved away over fears of being arrested and the only children populate the town. With the adults gone and the town in the children's control, Stan declares it's ours. The children do not get along and soon end up in a divided town with a white line drawn down the middle. Meanwhile, a couple from out of town, Mark and Linda Cottoner, are having car trouble as they approach the town. They ask where the nearest phone is and is told it is in Treasure Cove. When they reach Treasure Cove, they are attacked by kindergartners and forced back to Smiley Town. They are taken to meet the mayor, Cartman, who asks them to retrieve a book from Treasure Cove in exchange for help. Getting the book will force a member of Treasure Cove to be sacrificed. They agree but soon realize the danger of one of the kids being sacrificed. Mark and Linda finally realize that the town has been descended into an anarchy because all the parents are falsely accused of molesting the children. Mark starts to talk to the kids about their parents and the word parents resonates with the children and causes them to begin to remember. They allow Mark to call the police, clearing their parents of all the wrongdoing. The parents are reunited with the children. Ultimately, the boys decide that they do not care about their parents' traumatic ordeal since the problem had seemed to resolve itself. 
Number 2, The Ungroundable, which is episode 15 in season 12. The storyline starts with Butters mistaking older students following the vampire craze for actual vampires. Butters hides to record the members of the South Park Vampires Club on his phone. However, Butters' phone malfunctions, exposing him in front of the vampires. Butters attempts to repel them with a crucifix before running away. After an unfair grounding from his parents, Butter concludes that nobody listens to him. Having come to believe that if he becomes a vampire, he will no longer get victimized. He asks the vampire kids to let him join them. They take him to Hot Topic and change his appearance to match theirs. Butters returns home to his parents who are angry at him because of his lateness and his dyed hair. Butters responds that he is now ungroundable and hisses at his parents, thus completely shocking them. Shortly after, Butters starts wasting away because he believes that he is a real vampire and can only feed on blood. He sneaks into Cartman's room in the middle of the night in a failed attempt to feed, only managing to give Cartman a love bite. Butters' parents, alerted by Cartman's mother, ask him if he got gay with one of the schoolmates that night. Steven attempts to confine Butters to his bedroom, but he simply leaps out of the window. Throughout this episode, the school's goth kids loathe the vampire kids with whom they are getting confused with by everyone. After discussing what they could do to stop the vampire craze, the goth kids decide to get rid of the head vampire, whom they kidnap and mail to Scottsdale. This however fails to solve the problem, and just when the goth kids are about to face defeat from the vampire kids, Butters informs them that Hot Topic is the source of the vampire craze. He takes them there and they burn down the store. At home, Butters tells his parents that the goth kids burnt down the Hot Topic and that he has now reverted back to normal and he becomes groundable once more. In the end, the goth kids ask for a school assembly in order to explain to everyone the differences between goth kids and douchebag vampire wannabe boner kids. And number 1, Night of the Living Homeless, which was episode 7 in season 11. After a buildup of homeless people in South Park, Kyle recommends that they do something about it. The town council has also taken notice of the problem, but the Parks County's expert on homelessness advises that if no one gives them anything, they will leave. The number of homeless immediately grows dramatically and they wander everywhere asking for change in a zombie-like manner. The boys escape the horde of homeless and head for the home of the homeless expert. He informs the boys that the homeless people actually live on change, almost like food. He tells them that the nearby town of Evergreen had solved a similar homeless problem and that they should travel there and find out what they did. Once they leave, the homeless people try to get into their houses and he shoots himself in the head to take the easy way out. This fails to work since he consistently shoots himself 9 times. As the boys travel, more adults escape to the community center roof. The boys make it to Evergreen, which has been devastated. There are only 3 remaining survivors, dressed in camouflage and heavily armed. They are distrustful of the boys and threaten to shoot them, since being minors, they are not homeowners and are therefore homeless. While talking to the survivors, Kyle finds a pamphlet on the ground which advertises South Park as a heaven for homeless. He realizes that Evergreen townspeople got rid of their homeless people by convincing them to migrate to South Park. The children realize that they must get rid of the homeless people because, as Kyle reasons, their parents are as stupid as the people of Evergreen and South Park would fall apart just like Evergreen did. The boys heavily reinforce a bus and take it to the community center in South Park where the homeless people have gathered. They advertise California as super cool to the homeless people and leaves them there. And that is it for the video guys. As always, thanks for watching. We hope y'all enjoyed. If you did, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. Follow me on Twitter at Valenplana and I'll see you all later.